on the topic of character customization, Pokemon games have, relatively speaking, widened their options, slowly but surely handing players the reins over look details like never before. Eyes, lips, hair, clothing, and more. As the final installment of this trilogy, I, Substitute, will complete the character creation ritual by offering you more appearance altering ideas for your monster taming projects. Again, note that these are in addition to what currently exists, changing your gameplay into a runway of endless possibility. We first dip our toes into physical options, where players can fine-tune their desired attributes. Let's comb through the options, starting from the top with... Hair. Pokemon character hair can be as diverse as the creatures themselves, something that, likely as a limitation of your hair having to fit under hats, has been drastically toned down. You can't have your updo shooting through your fitted cap, right? Not with that attitude, you can't. I'd personally want to see less conventional styles take center stage, more Comic Con than hair salon. How about the 90s favorite, spiky and tall? The middle split long hair combo seen with edgelords like Sushomaru and Sephiroth. The untamed mane like Mugen or Spike Spiegel. Mohawks. And of course, any hairstyles previously worn by protagonists and other characters. With a variety of bangs, pigtails, ponytails, and hair spikes. Hair color should definitely be expanded too. Since everyone and their grandmother has two-toned hair in recent games, the courtesy should at least extend to the player. Human hairdos are but the frosted tip of the styling iceberg. Pokemon themselves could serve as inspiration. Routes' bowl cut. Furfru and Glaceon's dangly sideburns. We can also try the Vulpix, the Flaffy, Roselia, Swirlix, Machop Trihawk, Gloom. Or let's keep it simple with no hair at all. Easy breezy. Comment below if any more come to mind. Eyes. Next, while we currently have an abundance of eye options, there are others that I like to see. In particular, eyes that exist in the universe but are unavailable to us as the player. Number one, or number two, three, or four, five, or six, five or six, seven, or you know what, forget all that. I just want Brock's eyes. Give me Brock's eyes. Eyebrows of course round out the look with thicker brows, brows that stretch beyond the confines of the face, or no eyebrows at all, being a few suggestions. With options like these, the player can have eye variation on par with those of even their Pokemon companions. Looking good. While eyes are currently selectable, Scarlet and Violet left us wondering why the next trait hasn't been touched yet. Will noses ever be customizable in the future? Who knows? There are a few sniffer ideas for the players to sport. The standard nose is of course on today's menu, but for a more mature look, might I suggest a slender one with a longer ridge line? Rounded broader ones suit the robust, while a little piggy nose is made for the rotund. For added intrigue, a few silly ones can be equipped. The Probopass, nostrils only, the teardrop, the hook, uh -oh. or again, no noses at all. A fine selection. The next swappable part of our face has been right under our noses the whole time. I'm talking about our mouths. A character's expression speaks volumes, making the right mouth choices just as important. Present mouth options are very subtle, a fine distinguishing line to the point where they can barely be separated from a glance. My suggested ideas, wider grins, feral smirks with little jagged teeth sticking out, ooh woo curvy smiles, a delicate grimace, a reluctant grimace, or even slight wrinkles to add depth to our design. Plumper lips could also be an option, just don't overdo it. Now to contain our chosen eyes, noses, and lips with our next trait. Face shape is something we don't have control over, at least not yet. Whether it's a standard home base pentagon, wider octagon, slender, smooth, the alien, round, reverse triangle, or square, every face has a shape, and every shape tells a story. To close this chapter of customization, we turn the page to the footnotes of Bonus Look Options. These traits come standard with many an RPG, so I thought at least I'd mention them. Facial hair. It's fine if the protagonist stays a perpetual, useful character, but hey, sometimes people can grow facial hair early. Peach fuzz, stubble, goatee, soul patch, pencil mustache, standard mustache, walrus mustache, handlebars, the Poirot. 
Face markings are also something I wouldn't mind seeing expanded upon, beyond the current selection of freckles and beauty marks. For decorative tattoo options like Zoid characters can make your visage more appealing. A bit of a tangent here, but does anyone know what these scuff marks are on Ash and AJ? Those are lightning shaped freckles, right? Not scars? Add them to the list as well. And finally, physical build. I doubt the mainline games will do this since they'd have to adjust all the clothing sizes too, but for your insert mon taming project of choice here, I'd say it's fair game. Pokemon Go recently introduced changing your weight, which could be a model for how this is implemented. Width and height, scalable within reason. With your physical specimen completed, let us move on to accessorization. If you're going to be out and about, you might as well go in style. Bags, phone cases, helmets are some of the newer ways we can drip out. However, Scarlet and Violet severely cuts back on said drip, our outfit variety, due to the restrictive and centralizing mandate of uniforms. With uniforms, we lost a lot of graphic tees and color swap top options, and even a few Pokemon themed ones. I prefer it if future games reverted to the pre SV philosophy, if only for variety's sake. What I'm looking for in particular are fewer limits to outfits and greater cosplaying opportunities. By the time I get to online battles, I want to be able to dress up as existing trainer classes, similar to how we could choose trainer profile picks for the old PSS lobby. And while I hate to cite microtransactional cosmetics, Pokemon Go actually has a lot of outfits that would be really cool in the mainline games, from entire costume sets like Evil Teams, to individual Pokemon inspired articles like Cubone hats and shoes and coats and Hoopa earrings. Generally it's really well thought out as far as cosmetics go. Just need that to come without the grind and price tag and FOMO stuff. To recreate gym leader outfits, wear E. Makuni's jumpsuit and even sport retro player outfits from previous games would be a customizable dream come true. Well, we're dressed to impress now. A few finishing touches are worth mentioning. Miscellaneous bonus round. The final batch of ideas center around customizing miscellaneous things such as your knickknacks, your UI, your battle pose, whatever wasn't mentioned in the previous sections. Since the mainline games are so prone to losing features arbitrarily between installments, I feel obligated to remind everyone of the cool things that we should preserve in a bonus round of ideas. The continuation of custom Rotom phone cases, and by extension, customizable Pokedex and menu UI options. Custom bikes, custom PC box backgrounds, customizable bases, gyms, and or rooms, and ball capsules, which in my opinion should have been expanded upon rather than disappearing for 10 years, and so on. Battle poses are also a new DLC addition, something that I'd like to see not cruelly yanked away, but expanded upon. I will illustrate what I had in mind. The nonchalant flick, a windmill wind-up pitch, a bowling ball, rock skipping, Backspin Frisbee Throw Quick Draw Jump and Spike Down Drop from Hand and Kick The Hacky Sack Headbutt Spike Karate Spin Kick The Kiss and Throw The Granny Shot The Outstretched Arm No Throw The Smoke Bomb The Juggle Kamehameha An angled slide from the tip of one hand, over the shoulders, down to the tip of the other, and then toss A basketball shot A telekinetic throw As the match ends, I see potential for a victory and defeat poses as well And so your avatar in the gaming overworld is complete. We've crafted interesting backstories, chosen character classes that would suit our playstyle, and now have selected a proper look. If you feel I've missed some aspects, be sure to comment down below. For more free to use ideas like these, I highly recommend catching up by visiting this channel's ideas playlist. From battle items to evolution methods, perhaps you can find something useful to take your ROM hack or fan game to the next level. And if you haven't already, do the usual YouTube stuff and become a substitute subscriber. I'll be back next time with new encounter method ideas. See you soon. Ish.